figure out how to work through this. When I became a sitter, I did it for all 50 states. California is in 43rd place out of 50. We're not looking very good. We have the largest unrestricted net deficit in the nation. Uh, but our per capita is pretty high, so I mean our population is high. But just for a teaser, if you're in a city with less than 10,000 people, you're not looking very good. If you're in this range of 10,000 to 70,000, you're okay. But once you get over 70,000, it's not, it's not so good. When you when you become Oakland, or you become LA, or you become San Francisco, you know you're 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 uh, you're having some some fiscal difficulties. This is from digging into the data. We, we put a team on it. We went through all 482 chapters. We couldn't get all of them. Three cities have still not given us their information. <laughs> and so we took that data. We just kind of came with a, a number. We tried to do quality control because one of the team members got to name a county in, in, instead of to name a city, but divided to name a county's number by the city population. And so it kind of got kind of crazy. So we we, were, we made sure everything was was right. Uh, but I decided we, we, we need to do it. We need to aggregate all this data. I'm not here to tick anybody off. I'm just trying to figure out where are the ranges, where are you guys, what's going on, what do we need to work with, and why don't you show up when I do a bill? That's going to change. Thank you. <laughs> so last year we did eight bills. Uh, we did we, we we intentionally selected SB 32. We waited in line for that number <laughs> because of. Uh, the, 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 the state's desire to reduce greenhouse gases to a certain level at a certain date, and you got to work over a period of time and say, okay, we'll use that theme. We've got to reduce our pension liabilities by a certain date. And so they convinced the supervisor, which is a great deal, because look at where we're making 20% a year, it's going to go on forever, like yesterday is today is tomorrow. No, it's this. It goes up and down. This is like we're old enough. We know what happens. Things just don't keep going up. But when you have staff telling you, oh, everything's fine. We can go ahead and improve benefits 50 percent and we'll be fine we'll never pay for it which which is crazy because we haven't had an actuary like terry before they're all internal at the time it was it was to, to tell someone flat out that we're never going to have to pay for this increase huh that's malpractice right anyway so we said let's let's uh let's stop this practice hire someone else or someone independent that was killed we also said why don't we start working on gas 45 make sure your, your retiring medical is fully funded, like not even me just doing, that was killed. Uh, we also did SB 656, I had to make this a two year bill, I'm actually trying to fix the pension system for judges. Of all the branches, the judges did a really bizarre pension plan, and so um, I, was, I had to tell the judges, this, this might even increase costs a little bit, so you gotta figure out, what are you gonna do? You're gonna pay in a little bit more, you know, you're going to take lower benefits. What do we do actuarially to make it pencil out? So Terry, follow this bill because we're still it's still alive. But what was really cool is that Lance Ito came to testify on behalf of this bill. <laughs> now I got to meet Lance Ito. It was really <laughs> who, who would have known? So we're still working on that. 671. Patty Gorsica is here. Patty and I back in 2006 working on prepaying the pension system instead of paying 26 times every pay period every two weeks. We said let's. What, you know, OSERS, the Orange County Fire Retirement, Retirement System, what will you give us if we pay everything on the first day of the year as opposed to parsing it out? And they came back and said, we'll give you the discount rate. We'll give you 7.5%. And we said, well, that's great. And we could borrow it at about 4.7. And we saved the county about 20 million on that first, what about 5 million? I think 5 million on the first effort. But when we did it later years with bigger amounts, we were saving $20 million a year. And, and when we did the analysis after, well, now 11 years, the, the pension system actually did better <coughs> financially by getting all those chunks in earlier. So um, that went through, and in fact, Jerry Brown signed it uh, because we, we what we wanted to do was make some uh, modifications because the wording was a little wrong in the code, and everybody got nervous. Oh, we've already got everything validated. What are you doing with this bill? But uh, we got it through, and then lo and behold, what does Jerry do? He, he, he prepays, he prepays CalPERS six billion dollars. So I think there was a little bit of a fingerprint, but I voted against that bill because he couldn't get a little incentive from CalPERS to prepay. You know, it's like, where's a little discount? Maybe half the discount. Well, you know, give us something to, you know, we thank you. We couldn't get this. Uh, 681 was uh, the exit strategy, which we've talked about. I'll talk about a little more in a second. That did not, uh, that I made a two-year bill, but it got killed uh, in January. 
SCA1 was the secure choice and not subsidy. Uh, this, it's sort of a pension thing, but also I'll leave it alone, but that got killed. Uh, let's see, and then and I have two that are on hold. We wanted to do, to abolish the California rule, which you asked about, uh, but because the Marin case and the other case is still in the Supreme Court, we've, we've held back. And then voter approval for pension debt. We did that in Orange County with Measure J back in um, 07. Passed like 80%, and, and it basically said, of the vote, it basically said, yeah, if you're gonna raise uh, pension benefits and increase an immediate unfunded liability, then you have to get the voters to approve that technique or that improvement in the pension formula or the negotiating contracts you use. And I stole that idea from a very conservative county, San Francisco. <laughs> and it's in their charter. So at least these were successful. Uh, another bill I did that came out of Laguna Beach was, hey, requiring cities that have debt or want to issue debt to follow generally accepted accounting principles. Kind of common sense, but it wasn't in the code. So they could actually prepare their cappers without showing the pension liabilities. So we got that taken care of. Now this year, we have 1031, which is a temporary COLA freeze when a defined benefit pension plan is left at 80% fund. Like as Ken referred to it as a three-legged stool, we've got, we've got employers that are paying in, employees that are paying in, and then retirees, nothing. And they're not, they have no skin in the game. They have no, no reason to call CalPERS and say, hey, how come you're at 68% when you should be at least at 80, theoretically, based on most studies. And so we're saying, hey, let's put, let's put that on hold until you are at 80% budget so that everybody's chipping in. And so Diane has also been real keen in, in pushing this. I wanted to do this. I remember asking Tom Mott, remember the Patty's here, so he didn't want to do it. <laughs> but do you, do you know the, uh, I'm sure you do, the percent of the city's, a city's payment to CalPERS, and you folks know this, like 23 or 4 percent of that annual payment just goes to the COLA. It's a significant portion of the annual payment by the city just to pay the pension payment, and, it, and it's just getting bigger. Well, is that right? Diane, I, that could be right. I asked for the data and the finance and administrative committee told me to pound sand, right, Terry? <laughs> Not so many words. So I'm new in Sacramento. I'm trying to build relationships. I am working well with my Democrat colleagues on the other side of the aisle. And um, I'm in a committee meeting, and Marcy Frost is there, but so is the head of uh, the legislative director for uh, League of Cities, uh, Dane Hutchins. And so we talk about this uh, topic of the tap, and I'll get to that in a second, but I, I was sort of rude. I said, boy, if, if, if you're being charged only 7.5% every year, assumption, but then you want to quit, you know, it's 2%, you know, that's like, like they were over, you know, they were, they were, they were I said, is that fraud? <laughs> and, 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 Richard Costigan, one of your board members, came into my office. He and I have a relationship. And he says, you use the F word. Fraud. So I said, what, extortion? What do you want? You know, it's like, something has to be, be fixed. But, so Marcy and I have built a relationship since then. <laughs> we meet, we talk. Diane's been real good about uh, getting us together as well. But we want to try and say, hey, if, if we've got to get everybody participating in trying to get these funds back to a, a fully funded status. And so that's what 1031 is about. 1032 is to eliminate the terminated agency pool. So if we know, we know because you're, or I don't want to be careful with the pronoun, I keep looking at you, Carrie and Kelly, so forgive me. We know <laughs> that CalPERS has their annual financial statements audited. We know how much you contributed. We know how much you earned. We know what we're paying from your funds and member benefits that are retired. And so we should be able to calculate what money you have left. And that that money is yours, you're the plan sponsor, and you should be able to take that and do whatever, you know, whatever, however you want to do it. Tia Craft or, you know, you name it, because basically CalPERS is a service provider. It's just like any other company that says I'll manage your money by investing it and I will manage your benefits by paying them out and it's none of our business what you decide to do as far as benefits which is Terry was kind enough to say yeah that SB 400 was sort of 
counselor is driven, um, but um, you know these things are changing. But we should be able to then give plan sponsors the ability to do something other than tap, which says here's what your new number is, and you're going to fund it for how many millions. And so we're already seeing uh, this uh, exit strategy being used. You, you already mentioned Loyalton. So it is much better for Loyalton City Council to say we're exiting CalPERS and we are going, we are not going to pay the you know $11 million, whatever you want us to do to buy this bond portfolio, this, this cheap men or this fees is kind of a process. Uh, we're just going to pay the Delta. We'll just pay every month a couple thousand to the retirees or whatever it is. That's a whole lot more manageable than this route that Cal first has set up. It's sort of a mother, like you will you will be with us and we're gonna strangle you and we're gonna make it impossible for you to leave Cal first, which is this I think I think it's just not the way it should be run, as politely as I can put it. So with that, um, SB ten thirty three is another bill we're doing this year and it's pension re reciprocity. Uh, as as uh, Patty had already mentioned earlier, you know, you, you have someone who trains at Fullerton and then goes to a, 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 a wealthier city, gets a big pay raise, but somehow because you're in the food chain, you have to pay part of the retirement, you know, through the whole thing. So so you you are now, maybe they get a much bigger raise. You're, you're, you weren't planning on that, but you get to pay for it because you're part of the the food chain is called reciprocity. And we're just saying, wait a second, who, instead of everybody come collectively paying for the retirement benefits when they retire, it should be charged to each city based on what the salaries were at the time they were at that city, so that the, the bigger city doesn't get subsidized by the cities that are sort of choking now on, on, on the retirement payment. So I think this one we should probably get Marcy Frost endorsement on or hopefully some help. I, I would think that maybe they're already working on something internally to try and make sure that it's a little more equitable now that we've seen some of the abuses. Uh, are you getting co-sponsors with communities or particularly at 1030? Eric would answer that. We have co-sponsors on these bills? Not yet. Not well, yet. Spencer, you might be able to answer more, but not like right now. So I'm also helping out uh, Steve Glazer. So those of you that were in Sacramento this week, Got to meet Steve. He was elected just a couple months after I was. We were both up in special elections in the spring of 2015. And uh, he's an incredible Democrat. He's uh, He does a lot of town halls with Republican Assemblywoman Catherine Baker. Uh, they work together really well up in Contra Costa County. And he's a little more on the moderate side. In fact, he voted against the uh, SB1, the Dash that's why Governor Brown had to get one of my Republican colleagues to vote. <laughs> to get that one necessary vote. And what's ironic is that Steve Glazer was Jerry Brown's campaign manager when he ran eight years ago. So, I mean, Steve is sort of an independent guy, but Steve lost his chairmanship. And he paid a price for, for his uh, voting against the gas tax. But he is doing a bill that creates a new optional defined contribution plan for new state employees who choose not to make contributions under the public employee retirement law. You know, there are a lot of kids, millennials, they're not going to stay with an employer for more than five years, right? But uh, they don't have portability currently uh, with CalPERS. So he's saying, let's go ahead and set up a DEC plan. And after five years, if they say, wait, I really do like working for the state, then they can convert. And if they don't, then everything's fine. They stay the way they are. So I am a, a co-author with uh, Catherine Baker. So now just to clo close the four questions, um, I, wanna, I wanna show you where you are. Out of all the 482 cities dividing your unrestricted net position by your population, uh, somehow put uh, Cyprus in 33rd place in the state uh, in first in Orange County. And when I did this in 2010, uh, they were in sixth place. So we gotta figure out how Cyprus moved up five spots. Uh, Tustin is in second, Irvine is in third, Laguna Beach, Laguna Niguel, Lake Forest, Dana Point, Laguna Woods, La Palma, Elisa Viejo, Yorba Linda, these are, these are the, top, the top 11. 
out of the 34. We get to Villa Park is uh, in 12th. So I don't know, Steve, you were in third place when I did this earlier in the decade. So we have to figure that one out. But here, here's where you rank uh, based on just a simple metric. And so when we get to Los Alamitos, number 22, you're in 328th place, Garden Grove, 330th. Westminster, Virginia, Fountain Valley, Orange, Fullerton, and you're in 28th place in the county, but you're 386th place in the state, uh, Huntington Beach. Lorianne, you're doing a great job. You can see that why she has to work so hard, why they're so diligent, because you're in 29th place with 420 seconds. So, uh, you know, it, you can see the rest, but doggone it, of all the crazy things, I live in city 444, number 34 in the county. So I'm, I'm like, I, this was not a fun exercise for me either, but you can kind of see, you've all got to work. You've all got to figure it out because one recession, and it's not going to be pretty here. Orange County or California. And so we're trying to message. We're trying to message to the League of Cities to look and have to work. Like Lori and Ken said it, or we got to, how do we pay down what debts we have? How do we reduce things? How do we build reserves? And, you know, and, and Ken Dover's right. Pay raises? <clears throat> what? I mean, it's just, you know, this is where we're at. We're sort of at a, at a crisis point. We have been so fortunate, so fortunate to have the stock market do what it's done mm -hmm. in the last. Well, now since November actually of 2016, a little blip recently. Ironically, CalPERS, their investment office officer, felt that we should diversify and pull back on equities before the election. Uh, so that that was an opportunity cost that's kind of expensive as well. That's already been published and documented. So I need your help. I need letters of support. I need you to write editorial submissions to local newspapers for our bills. And then for my first committee that I've got to get through, which is again, public employment and retirement, we've got to, you know, give Portantino, who's up uh, in Pasadena area, Leva, who's up in the Chino Hills area, and Penn, who's up in Sacramento. So you know, give them emails, notes, letters, so they can build their files. We have a Dropbox system, so we keep uh, copies of all of the letters we get on bills. And if you can, show up and testify. Because all I get are union representatives bashing my bills, and I get no one in support so it's just really uh, been crazy but maybe to wrap up just some thoughts about the cola as a financial planner we would tell people about the rule of 72 and, and all you have to do is divide your return into 72 and that's how many years it will take for your money to double but so at three percent you make three percent a year colas then you're going to double your money in 24 years so if you retire at 50, making 75,000 as a police officer, and if by the time you're 74, you're making 150,000. I mean, it's just an incredible paradigm. And, and, and so, you know, even at 2%, just 36 years, so if you're retired at 50 and you're 86, you're, you're gonna double uh, your money. And who needs all that money at that time? It's not like a private sector, no equivalent uh, to that. So we're, we're, we're gonna look at that. Um, but uh, what was really funny is when, this, when the county went from, uh, went to 2.7 and 55 or 57 or whatever it was, sorry. I mean, everybody, I've had 800 employees retire in March after the, 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 the new improvement took effect because they wanted to get the COLA raise because they knew they weren't going to get a raise at the county, but they took the COLA raise uh, in, in retirement. So again, this uh, attrition that Kim was talking about, losing employees, and this, just losing the institutional knowledge is just a killer, but let alone when they're so young. And so you, you said, where else could we make a buck if we invested 39 cents jointly? And I'd say just about anywhere else. <laughs> you know, it's just, this is just money management. This is just a diversified portfolio. And I will say you have a good one. I wish I could put more of my own personal portfolio in yours, so that I don't have to worry about, do I put it in small caps or do I put it in international bonds and let you do that. Uh, so with that, um, that, that kind of covers what I wanted to, to, to do, but the weather here is great. <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we, are, we are enduring some things, but we're working together. And if I can get some incremental victories, and I can keep educating my Democratic colleagues, and, and if you keep letting them know, 
I mean, I needed all the cities up and down the state to let my colleagues know that there is a problem. Because what is the 12 step process? You gotta get to step one first, right? And that's admitting that we have a problem. So thank you for coming today. Thanks for all the great input. The session was great. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Let's play that out. You cannot afford to make your CalPERS payment. So that means that you have more urgent fixed costs that you have to pay. So, so or am I going to assume that you can't pay a good portion of your rents? Because you, 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 you can't you can't just pick on CalPERS, right? Because you know what CalPERS will do, or what the legislator will the legislature will do is to say, well, Newport Beach. You know, you could afford this place, and you built this place. So why, why couldn't you? You know, you made that decision. So then, why should we be not paid full because you know you made some other choices? And they can go down the line of every city that's having financial problems. You can go to Stockton. You can go to uh, uh, Alejo. You can go to San Bernardino, and other decisions that they made on top of the pension, and they, they're going to start hammering you. So the reason I make this long preamble is that if you, if you have to then somehow say, I'm gonna pay everybody less, right? And then we're talking chapter nine. You know, then we're talking workout plan, right? We need a plan of adjustment. And so, and then counselors will be there to, to fight you on reducing the payments. There's only been one federal judge that is successful in a chapter nine bankruptcy in getting the city to reduce the benefits to its members, and that was Detroit. San Jacinto, excuse me, uh, Sacramento, San Bernardino, uh, and uh, in, in Stockton, uh, in Vallejo, they they ran into the, the wall of CalPERS, and I, you know, Carrie, if you need to fight back, this is before your time anyway. Um, they, they just kind of told the cities two things. One, we have $300 billion, and we're gonna fight you, you're not gonna, do anything to, to reduce or do anything for our benefits. But number two, if you have a benefit that's different than your neighboring cities, then you won't be able to recruit and you're gonna have retention and, and other issues, which Ken Domer's already been very transparent about. So those three cities kept everything the same. The people that got it in shorts were the bondholders. And so that's a scary message to the bond market. And so they're all watching saying if you're gonna not pay our bonds, then California, Illinois, Massachusetts, Connecticut, all these states are gonna have some real tough times trying to borrow out. And if you can't borrow through the bond market, your banks aren't gonna help you out. So it's just gonna be a real interesting grinding halt. And that's why paying down debts, getting ahead of some of this stuff, building reserves is so critical. What does the legislature, when you go and talk, when you talk off the record with your colleagues you're on the other side of the aisle, uh, is there, are there areas where we can talk and, and make progress together, or is it just a resolute rejection? Well, in a simple form, um, the Democrats vote in a herd. And so if it's a, and if it's a Democrat author, then, you know, they got to vote for, for the bills. It's just sort of an interesting dynamic. I went to one of my colleagues uh, when I first got there, <laughs> and uh, I said, uh, you know, you just voted for this bill. It's a crappy bill. Why didn't you vote for this bill? We both know it's a lousy bill. He goes, he says, yeah, it's a lousy bill. I said, oh, yeah, I'm doing here. What, what's going on? He says, well, in my party, if I don't vote with them, they'll run somebody against them. And I don't need that hassle. So it's easier to vote for somebody lousy bills than it is to put up with the campaign effort. So they are able to keep them them in check. Not so much my party. We're all kind of independent. Um, so that's that's part of the paradigm. So now it's like, okay, now how do we incremental the message? And so that's why Steve Glazer is refreshing. Uh, but once the cities and the counties keep communicating over and over that this buy script is coming, it, the squeeze is coming. We got the data. I mean, we see it. Now, how do we get in front of it? So some cities are doing sales tax increases. 
but you only get like two, you only get two percent more. So that's just you know if you've already done other things with sales tax or what other or other causes, so then then you're capped. And then what happens? You can't touch the property tax. So then you start you know and so then you become uncompetitive with your neighbors, right? So it just gets to be a real difficult. One other question on ten thirty one on the um, COA. Are you looking at if you have to get into some negotiations with this and maybe it's not a, a total elimination of the COLA, maybe it's a certain salaries or comp retired salaries over a certain amount for a certain period of time until the funded status comes down to a certain level. All those points are negotiable all the way down. Are no, that would be nice. It, you know, like if, 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 if Cal First weighs in and says, well, we don't like it because we have this, and you call this the triple PA, you know, which, you know, so, okay, now what, so then instead of saying we oppose the bill, done, you should say we would support if modified. And you would say, in, or you make the following language changes to deal with the triple PA so that. You know, somehow we figure out how do we get back to giving 80% of the inflation factor, you know, and how do we catch it up. Instead of just going, oh, let's just kill this, this dude, let's, we should, let's, let's craft it because time is running out. CalPERS made decisions a long time ago that should have changed a long time ago. Lori did a good job of explaining that. And now we're, we're playing catch up ball. And so now how do we work together? So our, you know, now that I've got Kelly and Carrie here, I would say, you know, when you work with Mark, say, let's, let's work together and say, instead of just trying to kill the bill, let's see what we can do to structure it so that you're happy and I can get my other <coughs> colleagues happy so that we can start incrementally moving the ball. But if it's always no, 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 then I would advise everybody to start building law practices that specialize in chapter nine bankers. And that's going to be in that. So uh, as part of the takeaway, you want us to get involved and we absolutely will. So your staff works with Kelsey, ACCOC, to make sure we know in your bill, to take 1031, that's really the, well, they're all good. coming forward, so we can get the letter writing going, we can get city council resolutions, we just, we just need to get a concentrated advocacy effort underway. And, and I need you, because the League of Cities has taken a, a different posture. They're saying, we're gonna wait for the next governor. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, this one gets it. This one's already done an amicus brief on, on the Marin case, right? He's already said, wait a second, the California rules got to stop. The next governor. So he gets it. I don't know what I'm going to get with the next governor. Yeah, so just so everybody knows, um, so you know too, Senator, your bigger pension package will be coming to our legislative and regulatory committee on March 29th, and staff is recommending full support positions across the board. So we'll get we'll, you those letters quickly. We will do our best. Amendments? Do we actually propose recommended We can. We can, the committee can. Will that discuss, Alan, discussion regarding how to modify that is you're, you're bringing over will that take place before that meeting? No, we don't have to have that meeting. So that, that's what everybody will discuss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let, let the doctor do a little surgery. I will. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Great. We, we have, oh, Patty. Oh, yes, it sounds like CalPERS has sort of a clawback COLA bank kind of program. Is that right? It's like a carryover. Okay. Yeah. Um, we have the same thing in those. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's parallel to OSERS. Um, have you looked at just changing that provision as a start um, to the COLA? Um, Patty, I would, I would say this. Um, I only get 20 bills a year. And I have over 90 suggestions for bills. <laughs> so we had to, you know, trim it down, you know. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I'm happy to look at that next year. I mean, it's all incremental. You know, all this stuff with CalPERS has been building up incrementally. We, we put up with presumptive disabilities, you know. You know, a, a police officer, his grandfather could have died of a heart attack, his father could have died of a heart attack. And and, and, and once he says, oh, my cholesterol level, this is that, he gets a, a, an automatic retirement, but we know he's 300 pounds smoking cigarettes and donuts all the time. But he, but he gets, he's got a heart presumptive, he gets a, a free pass, he gets to retire, right? So there's all these little things that have been built into the, the CERL and the PERL that somehow we have to start somehow attacking. So if I only have 20 bills a year, it's just gonna be really difficult unless I can get more of my colleagues to start chipping away. 
Any other questions? Great. Thank you so much.